Are you guys Christians, by the way? No. No, fair enough. That Christian ideologies don't already influence the government as yes. moves more than any other ideologies? So it depends on the country, obviously. So it depends on the country. Like, I'm hearing an accent. Are you guys from the US? Yes. Right. So in America, Christians have more influence in America than Christians do in the UK. Which is interesting, because you guys don't have an established church, but we do have an established church. Well, what has the most influence here? Uh, liberal progressive politique. And that also, incidentally, is the, is the driving force in American politics as well, is liberal progressives. So generally, the agenda of the Democrats but the reason why it, it dominates is not just because the Democrats are a major party, because obviously it swings backward and forward, Republican, Democrat, but because the Democratic agenda, the progressive agenda, has won the cultural war in America, right? Apart from the odd occasional victory that Christians might have, but for the most part, the, Democrat, the progressive politique has won the culture war. Most of the debates are settled questions. Started so differently because it yeah. started from the idea that there were many faiths, and if you look at the colonies, there were many faiths, many sects. Yeah. And so the notion was that not having a religion of the state yes. gave people the ability to worship God in the manner that they pleased, including yeah. Native Americans. Yeah. And that was part of the way Rhode Island was even founded. Yeah. So have a country who believes in that separation of church and state and the liberal agenda is not to do what you're suggesting but, but let me can, can i re just let me reply to that quite i'll take other comments but let me reply to that one before you all jump in right so the, so the point is guys is you the, the, the what, what's your name madam dr kirk dr kirk oh what a name dr kirk so dr kirk is absolutely right the puritans who were flee fleeing the non-conformist christians of england were fleeing religious discrimination in England and they went off to set up America. America was founded out of the political reflections of Christians, non-conformist Christians. That's why you don't have an established church. That's why you don't have an established uh, religion. But the problem in America is that your understanding of the separation of church and state has been lost. And the reason why it's been lost is because progressive politicians don't recognize that their worldview has broken that separation. Progressive politicians, progressive politicians assume that they should naturally dominate, and it's fair in a democracy, I'm not, not saying there's anything wrong with this, but they're saying that their ideology, which is ultimately an atheistic ideology, should dominate the state. Looking to affect change and move forward to a state where everyone's equal, and you're not dominated by religion and having to like have people feel discriminated against because their ideas aren't counted by and um, like recognized by the government. But they, but it results in. Everyone recognizes that religion and politics are like our religion influences politics, but like what we're trying to do is just move away from that and become more inclusive. I don't think anyone's denying yeah. that or saying that. So, the, the, the point that, the, 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 what I would say though is that if your assumption is there, that one of the things that Christ teaches is that there is no neutrality. That's a fundamental Christian axiom of our politics. There's no neutrality. We don't believe in it. It exists in material science. There, there is a neutral space in material science, but there is no such thing as a neutral space in socio-economic and political cultural discourse. Now, the thing is, the progressives are making a whole set of value judgments based upon their atheistic outlook. It underpins their atheistic outlook because your uh, religious worldview sits ab above culture. Your culture is downstream of your presuppositional worldview. So if your presuppositional worldview is atheistic, you'll create a culture that reflects that, just like Christians create a culture that reflects their presuppositional beliefs. And so, because they have used the, 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 the they, because they have generally won the culture war, politics is increasingly reflecting their worldview, and, though you, so, and that's why you're getting this Trumpian reaction in America. Because there's a historical identity, a cultural identity, particularly of European-descended Christian 
Americans that remembers the Puritan non-conformist foundations of America. Separate cultural identity, separate from any constitutional arrangement. And that's why lots of American Christians think that America is a Christian country. That's their argument, because they're making a cultural argument. It's clearly not a constitutional argument, you know, because many of the people that wrote the Constitution were deists. They weren't even Christian. Any other, any other points or questions before I, before I stop? Can I ask what's the solution then? If you are Christian, yeah. and you have so many other cultures, or yeah. non-atheists, non-believers, what, what's the solution? Let's face it, at the end of the day, religion has been the cause of many wars. Can I reply to that? Yeah. yeah. So firstly, the lady is right. Religion has been at the heart of many wars. But the thing is, we haven't had less wars because we got rid of religion. We've had nationalistic wars, World War I, World War II. We've had ideological wars, Vietnam, South Korea, the Korean War. We've had wars about material resources, Iraq I, Iraq II. So we have wars regardless because of human nature. Human nature is conflictual. And the thing is, as Christians, we believe that the answer to our human nature is to be discipled in the way of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ and his teaching is the corrective to our own natural instinct. Because, let me, let me just lay out for you in, in a single sentence, let me just lay out for you a single sentence, the heart of the Jesus revolution, the heart of the Jesus worldview. He says, essentially, at the heart of pretty much every human problem is a lack of love, a lack of compassion, a lack of human solidarity. And that's why he majored in it. And it only takes 20 minutes worth of reflection in your own life to realize that at, so m at the heart of so many of the problems of our individual lives, so much of the cause of our own suffering and that of the society around us is this depreciation and this lack of love. And Christ re-centers human ontology, the human being, upon a virtue of love. But the thing about love is it isn't some gooey, soft, sponge that just goes, oh, let's just accept everything. Love can sometimes be hard and strong. You know, if a woman is, if, if any of you ladies were ever attacked by a Rottweiler, what would be your instinctive thing to do? A giant dog, if a giant dog attacked you, what would be the instinctive thing to do? Fight back? Would you try to run? No, just try and get away. Yeah, you try to run, right? You try and get away. Right. Now, do a thought experiment with me. Imagine that in some future life, you've got some wonderful children, you're walking down the street, and rather than attacking you, the dog attacks your children. What would your reaction be then? You would try to fight it. Why? The same event is occurring, but your reactions are now entirely different. Because one is about the love of self, and the other is about the love of another. And so Christianity doesn't teach some wishy-washy, wimpy kind of spirituality that's all goo and let's just love everybody. If somebody teaches something that's wrong, we Christians are called to stand against it. Which is why, as a Christian, I celebrate my brothers and sisters in America who are fighting the culture war, who are fighting to overturn Roe v. Wade, who are fighting to um, influence the American state towards a Christian way. It is unchristian to see evil and do nothing. That isn't the Christian way. If you see evil, you fight against it. What are your opinions on Roe v. Wade? I, I, I think, personally, I, I think that it should be made entirely illegal across the entirety of the United States. However, Roe v. Wade isn't about that. Roe v. Wade is about returning the decision to the federal state. It's not about making it illegal, that's just a democratic lie. The, 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 the Roe v. Wade judgment it's just bad law. It's not even constitutional to the American Constitution. You can't show me in the American Constitution where you have the right to medical treatment. You don't have the right to an abortion according to the Constitution. It was argued on the basis of privacy, and that's a complete abuse of the Constitution. So I'm glad that it's going to get overturned. I hope it gets overturned. I pray that it gets overturned. And I hope, God willing, state by state, through democratic means, 
that abortion is made illegal across the entirety of the United States. You hope it is. Sorry. It's like, like we're supposed to have compassion and love for other people. Absolutely. Why would we want to force other people into following our rules and like our values? Yeah. That's like no, I don't think that's very Christian at all. I think people should that's part of Christianity, like loving yeah. other people and letting them have their like yeah. live their life the way that they want to, not by how we want them to live. Yeah. Their life. Yeah. Can I reply to that? Yes. Right. So, so what, what you're talking about is what we in the, the academic world of the study of religion called the rise of the self. This idea of the loci of organization being upon the maximal number of individuals possible and allowing those maximal number of individuals to build a life according to their own values so long as it doesn't impinge upon other people. Okay? But that is a value judgment. It's a value judgment that emerges out of the reaction to World War I and World War II when the idea of the loci of identity being around the, the, the story of the nation state was scandalized. You cannot escape, you can't escape creating laws that influence people's lives according to presuppositional maxims. Presuppositional maxims sit at the fount of everything else. They sit at the fount of culture and culture is the fount of what becomes law. Right? So, what I'm saying is that there is no neutral space and so you're creating this, you're, you're working to this myth that somehow you've achieved some kind of neutrality, you haven't. You, you're still creating laws that influence people according to a set of presuppositional maxims. But people are never going to stop fighting if you keep forcing other people to do things that they don't believe in. But we do that all the time. So let me give you an example. There's an emergent debate in this country. I don't know whether America's ahead or behind this debate. But in this country, there's an emergent debate about whether pharmacists should be forced, should, should be required to give the abortion pill. Now, lots of Christians object to that. We don't want to participate in abortion. But in this country, there's a debate about whether to force a pharmacist to give the abortion pill. Currently, they have the right of ob conscientious objection. Yeah, it's happening yeah, in the UK. Man, now, in, the in US, America, right, right. But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, you just got to ignore the trolls. They want attention. They happen in the park. So you just got to ignore the trolls. Just focus on our conversation. Abortion. Eventually they get bored. So the question is, the question is, in this country, we're going, we're, we're possibly going to pass a law. They're going to possibly pass a law that will force a pharmacist to give out abortion. Now, my question, my, my question, now, now be a gentleman, the ladies asked you to shut up. Now, the, so, ladies, do you want to have a conversation with me? I just want to hear your reasoning. Yeah, exactly, and do you think he's helping that? I get, I get what he's saying, yeah. but I want to hear what you're saying. There you go, she's asked you to shut up. I get what you're saying. Right, totally so I, be a gentleman and shut up. Now, so the point is, in America, if they passed a similar law, would you agree with it or disagree with it? Disagree. 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 Right. So in America, if they said to you that it was it would be illegal to bear arms, to have an, a, 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 a high-powered rifle, would you want to pass a law to ban that? Yeah. Yeah. To be honest yes. with you, I would. Right. As a Britishman, I'm quite as sympathetic to that point of view. I'm not in... Right. But my point is, my point is, we will always pass laws that force people to do something that they don't want to but do. having arms, like people are like, there's mass shootings going on in America. This is like a national threat. Yeah. So that's a situation where it's like, you, I don't think it's, 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 it's not, not the same. What about, what about sacking people for opposing um, gay marriages? Do you agree with that? No, because that's people should be able to do whatever they like, follow their beliefs and live their Good. life the way they want to. So, that's so, so to a high that. degree, you're consistent to your worldview, and I appreciate that very much. To a high degree, you're consistent. But all I'm doing by these examples is pointing out to you that whatever ideology governs the state, they'll always be passing laws that somebody doesn't like. One of the wonderful things that we arrive to in Western politics, something that we should treasure and defend is that we found a system of changing government that doesn't require the sword. I.e. we can have political fights through, fought through the ballot box. 
Now that's a lesson that we can teach the Muslim world that don't have that idea in their religion. We can teach it to China that doesn't have it in its political ideology. And it's something that we should treasure. But in that world, if Christians win the battle of culture, if they fairly win through the democratic process, seats of power, then they have the right to pass laws that you don't like. Well, why does the Christian ideology have to be the dominant ideology? That's why a fair can't question. There just be, why can't the atheist ideology be, if that's what you're saying, yeah. why does it have to be the Christian ideology? So, as a Christian, I'm obviously committed to a Christian worldview. Right. And the Christian right. world, yeah. Is. Yeah, and, and so, granted, and I'm not committed to the liberal progressive view that governs me right now, but I still live in a country that's ruled by it. I still live in a country, hold on one second, I'm still living in a country where my taxes pay for nuclear weapons, where my taxes pay for a national health service. I still live in a country where I, if I speak against LGBT issues, I can lose my job, that there are limits on my freedom of speech. This is the reality that I live in. So just appealing to the fact that not everyone's a Christian, well, not every Christian's a liberal progressive, but yet we're still expected to live under laws by an ideology we don't agree with. So it's not a good argument. You know, if you can stand there and expect me to live under progressive diktat, well, I, I, can, I can stand here and say you can live under Christian diktat. I guess diktat. I would argue and say, if you're a Christian, you don't have to, you'll get divorced. But telling other people, they can't isn't right either. Right, but then, because, yeah. Like, let's say I'm Christian. I don't want to get an abortion. It's my choice. Whatever. Yeah. But somebody else is atheist or somebody else it just wants to do it. So yeah. It doesn't matter. He has to pay for it. He has to pay for I have to pay for it in this country. That's in your country, not in the US. Right, but, but my point to you is that you're still making a presuppositional argument. You're making the argument that, that life doesn't start at conception. Now, that's your view. Because I, wanna, I don't want to get sidelined into a debate about abortion. What I, what I want to stay on is the topic. But what I'm saying to you is the presupposition that life doesn't begin at conception underpins what you think should be the law. You're saying what we should achieve, what we should aim at as a, as a non-Christian, is we should aim at maximal freedom for the individual to build their own life in the way that they see fit. That's your, uh, the underlying narrative of your politique. But as a Christian, what I believe is that Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and that all things should be united to him, that he might be in all and through all glorified. And that means that politics should also be Christianized, and law should be Christianized, and culture should you be Christianized. Well, you know, if, Christi if, someone, if a Roman had turned around to a Christian in the first century and said, do you really think that you're going to convert the Roman Empire? I feel like it's on the downfall. I feel like it used to be that way, but things are changing the opposite way. I think it's going to be really hard to get yes. the whole everyone behind something that's considered, yes. Yes. considered, you know. And conflict is inevitable, and that's why Christians should act reconcile themselves to the reality of conflict. Conflict is not something that we can avoid if we're going to be faithful Christians to Christ. Because if we're going to follow Christ faithfully, we're going to come into conflict with people that don't want to. So that's fine. I'm, I'm happy with conflict. Conflict is not a problem. What's important to me as a Christian is that I am faithful and that as a faithful Christian, the state is also faithful to Christ as well. So I want to point society in the direction of Christ not in the direction of maximal freedom for the individual. But the thing about the Christian faith is it has a deeper message for you guys, and maybe, maybe we should leave it on this final point, is that there's a deeper message in the Christian faith for you, which is that you're not free. You're actually slaves to another power. You're actually slaves to principalities and authorities that have captured the thoughts of your mind and have influenced you through a lie that you tell yourself as a truth. And that actually the real truth is to be found in Jesus Christ himself. And when you establish your life on that truth, you'll find true freedom. Because you will free yourself from cultural expectation. You will free yourself from social peer pressure. You will free yourself increasingly from those inner desires that can so dominate our lives and you can build a life of heroic virtue that is governed by faith, hope and love.
What's your names? Chelsea. Chelsea. Nice to meet you, Chelsea. Samantha. Samantha. Ava. Ava. Do you guys do you do you guys have Bibles? Have you? I'm a Christian myself. You're a Christian yourself, and you? Uh, I don't have a Bible. Would you? I'd like to give you a gift. I give everyone any anyone anyone that I talk to. I always give them a gift, so long as the conversation's a nice conversation. So I'd like to give you a, a, a gift. So I'll talk to you later. That, that's that's a gift for you. And do you? Do you have? You're a Christian. Okay, guys. Peace be with you then. Christ is risen. Peace be with you. Look after yourselves. God bless. Take care. And you stop stealing my crowds. Uh, I just want to say, bro, if you, don't if you, me. fine, if you, if you want to have a conversation with me, it would be better if you didn't troll me, because people who troll me, eventually I just stop talking to them. So, no, I'm not going to run for political office, but I do support the Christian People's Alliance. You don't give anybody else much of a chance to get a word in edgewise. Well, as you can just see, that's not true. No, it is true. Oh, I think the camera speaks for itself. Okay, whatever you say. I think once you get on your high horse, that's it, you're off on a gallop. I think, I think that's just because I didn't just bend into you, you shouting into my presentation. No, I think you were on one, so you kind of like well, had your had your, and you were making some good points, right? Don't get don't get me wrong. I'm not challenging some of your fundamental premises, right? However, let's have a conversation about a topic okay. and not a conversation about me. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, so such as, okay, do you want to call the topic? No, you're you're the one who's come to me, not the other way around. What do you want to talk about? Nothing. Okay then. Well, it was lovely speaking to you.